Welcome to What's New with AWS. I'm Jeff Barr. Before we dive into the story, I want to thank you for all the great feedback and all the likes. So I love to get the word out about AWS. And I, in the, especially in the early days, I would speak anywhere I was invited. I was super, super frenetic. Fly here, fly there, go anywhere. Routine was always the same. Arrive, speak, depart, rinse and repeat, just keep on going. A couple of years ago, I had this crazy dream. I had this idea of doing a road trip. I thought it'd be so awesome to see the country, spread around my AWS message, and have just a great time while I was doing it. I kept checking my calendar, and I finally found this just perfect time slot to make it happen. I wrote a blog post, I picked out some cities, and I started to put my detailed calendar together. I got a ton of awesome responses from AWS and tech and developer user groups all across the US. I had 14 or 15 cities booked across the space of three weeks. I put a lot of energy into mapping, calculating, planning, booking, making sure I understood each and every segment, where I'd be and what I'd do. I wanted to make my trip AWS powered. I got some AWS sponsored for maps, for hotels, for some apps helping me to travel. I even got some news coverage, which I thought was really, really cool. In line with being really organized, I put together a binder. I had all my facts, my resources, my itineraries. I was so official, I even had a clipboard with a daily pre-departure checklist. I'd hop into my car and make sure I had every last detail set before I would hit the road and be off and running. One fine Saturday, I flew from Seattle to Boston got to the rental car counter, and I rented an SUV, explained to the agent what I was up to. She thought it was pretty cool and helped me to get the, the most awesome SUV I, I qualified for. Did my final prep the following day, and I'm ready to rock and roll. The first couple of talks go just fine. Boston, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. I got my basic rhythm down. Get up super early, I do my prep, go through my checklist, I drive anywhere between 300 and 400 miles, check into the hotel, find the venue, and then arrive, speak to park, the old rinse and repeat cycle. After I'm done speaking, kind of bail as quickly as I can because I'm kind of tired by that point. Back to the hotel, have some dinner, do my social media. So I'm rinsing and repeating, and it's getting to the point where it almost seems too easy, thinking this is going to be a breeze because I'm just a driving and speaking machine. The cities start to fly by. Roanoke, Virginia, Lexington, Kentucky, long haul to get to Dallas, and then from there on to Austin, Texas. I start to find that my mind can actually wander while speaking, and this is actually really dangerous. As I'm speaking, I'm up there in front of the audience. I almost, without thinking, because I'm kind of speaking on autopilot, I, I actually almost start to check my email while I'm in front of the audience. I quickly caught myself and realized, hey, hey, Jeff, you're actually in front of the audience. Keep on going here. What I learned after doing this for a week, I have to randomize my content just a little bit to keep it fresh and to keep myself on my toes. The cities riot, roll on by and things are going great. One interesting thing I found when I, as I did this road trip is I started to get credit before I even spoke, literally just for showing up. And this was kind of an interesting lesson. All of these user groups involved realized that they were, it wasn't just me showing up at a user group to speak. They were part of a bigger story. And they were really happy to say, well, we're, we're, we've got Jeff here, and Jeff is now on day seven of his trip, and he used to be here, and he's now here, he's going there. These user groups actually really enjoyed the fact that they were just part of, of, a, of, a, bigger, of a bigger plan. One fine morning, I had spoken in Austin, Texas the night before, and out into my SUV pull out the clipboard, go through my checklist, enter in my destination to my GPS. I think I'm going to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Put that in, GPS comes back, 760 miles. That doesn't look right. Give that GPS a quick whack, try it again. I get the same answer, 760 miles. I get this sense of dread. This is gonna be a really tough day. I check. I recheck, and despite all the planning I did, and I even had one of my colleagues check, I've somehow made this just awful mistake, and I've got nearly 800 miles to cover in a day. Now, 
Fortunately, I've got no talk for that night, but this is going to be just a, a day for the record books for me. Got to do a little bit extra prep, but I'm thinking I'm going to do this. Get some salty snacks, get myself just a whole box of donuts. Uh, don't tell my wife about the donuts, but I think I went through a whole box of donuts that day. Set out on the road. 400 miles in, I'm barely past the halfway point. The time is just flying by, but the miles are just kind of going ever so slowly. One real danger you find when you're on the road is this thing called road hypnosis. And I'd never experienced this before, but the entire road just turned into this weird kind of like 1980s video game. There were just these kind of white lines on the screen, and then I'm in the middle. And my only job in life is just to kind of stay between the lines. And it's like super hip hypnotic and super dangerous. And all of a sudden, I like kind of jolt myself into just full awareness and say, Jeff, this is not a game and you, you don't get a game over and a redo. This is your life at stake here. It kind of, and as, as you're driving, you can kind of get philosophical because you got just all these miles and just you and your, your thoughts sometimes and kind of thinking, well, this was almost this kind of metaphor for life in a way. Like, am I, am I living or am I just kind of playing? But you also kind of think about the failures. You think about, well, my phone has got all my, my contacts and my directions and it's my GPS and it's my altimeter. It's out here in the hot sun. If it fails, I'm, I'm kind of lost. I have no idea where I am. My SUV's got these really awesome low-profile tires. I'm here in, in Nowheresville, Texas, hundreds of miles between gas stations. I have no idea where I get a spare tire. It's just, it's just me here. As I'm driving and just chugging along, I start to do the math. I'm still about 400, almost 400 miles to go and starting to go faster and faster, kind of thinking ahead to the, the dinner that I heard was like really going to be good at my destination, getting tired of these donuts I've been munching on all day, and just kind of buzzing, just kind of thinking about the road. And suddenly, there's blue lights behind me. And it's like, uh-oh. And I quickly pull over. It's the, the Texas Highway Patrol. Officer gets out of, out of his car and He's straight from central casting. He's got his hand on the, the butt of his weapon as he approaches my SUV. He's got his Ray-Bans. He's got his crew cut. He's got his big Texas hat. Roll down my window. Greet him really friendly. Hey, officer. Sir, how fast do you think you were going? I, I knew exactly how fast I was going, but I just wanted to see how well my speedometer worked. So I let him confirm. Sir, you were going 95 miles an hour. Check right there. My speedometer is working just perfectly down to the mile. And he just says, well, what's the big hurry? Where are you going? I'm thinking, well, what do I do? How do I get out of this? I look over to my seat. I'm thinking, man, that, that donut cliche with police officers, that's just, that's just way too much of a cliche. He's not going to fall for that for sure. So I got a better idea. I tell my entire, my entire story. I'm driving across country. I'm on this quest to cross the country and do all this talking and think he would love to be a, a character in my story. I, I actually pull up my binder. I show him my press clipping. And I'm somehow thinking he's going to like say, wow, it'd be so cool to be a part of this story. And I give him this little chance to like let me off with, with, with a warning. He's not buying it. He's, be, be, he's behind the Ray-Ban, so I can't quite get his... his uh, impression but he's definitely just a super super skeptic about the whole thing and then he's like well we can just go ask the judge he's just another 200 or so miles back and maybe tomorrow afternoon or so he'd be happy to, to hear hear from you that is not gonna work so i'm resigned to the fact and he hands me out a 297 dollar ticket wonderful he's about to walk away but he comes back uh oh, now, now what? Broken taillight? Got to be some other problem. Sir, I want you to slow down. The reality is, just like within the last 10 miles or so as I was following you, you blew past without even seeing one of the most interesting historical sites in, in all of Texas. And you could have seen it. You would have loved it, I'm sure. T took him on his word. No time to turn around and see it. But then he wished me well, told me to be safe. Chastened, away I go, realize he, he's right. I got to stay safe. Got to just take my time as I do this. Let up a little bit on, on, my, on my gas. Still cruising right along. An hour or two later, I pull up behind this, this truck. And I can't quite see. I, we're on like a one-lane part of the highway. 
can't quite see. I'm kind of jagging my car back and forth to the side, but there's this huge, huge beam on this truck, and I can't quite get a sense of, of how big it is. But I'm, I'm now stuck behind this truck, and I'm driving at, at his speed rather than mine, and I'm like, okay, well, I'll just wait a bit. No idea how long I'm going to have to do this. 20 minutes or so in, he, he signals to go off to a rest stop, and I, through the, the twists and turns as on the highway, I get a sense that this is actually a pretty big beam he's pulling, so I'm, I'm that naturally curious. I, I pull off, and I park. I, I step way, way, way back so I can get a, a picture of this incredible beam and uh, think that's, 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 that, that's it. Kind of going to be a cool little memento of, of being stuck on the road. But there's a diner there. Figure it's time for, for an, an early dinner. Go in the diner, and I, I never do this. I, I'm happy just to go in and, and be my, my, by myself. There's a truck driver, and I sit on the stool next to him and chat with him about this big steel beam. I showed him the picture I took. And I guess no one ever asks truck drivers about their, their payloads because he started telling me all about this really cool steel beam. And he told me how hard it was to negotiate through parking lots and how when he got to the destination, he had to take it up the side of a mountain. And uh, told me some, some tips for driving, which were wonderful to hear. And then I, I told him all about the cop. He found that just hilarious. He, I told him about the donuts. He's like, yeah, right. Sure. That's as if that's going to work. And uh, but he, we, it was wonderful to meet him. It was kind of great to kind of get this kind of contrast of uh, just being a little bit slow and, and chatting with him. Wrapped up and back to my SUV, got in, kept on going, got to Santa Fe really, really late. And so fortunately, I, I had that, that dinner, nothing left in the car but the, those stale donuts. But I actually had a, a wonderful journey. I show up in my next city and get there just a little bit late. I'm ready to talk as usual. And I give my presentation, but this time things are going to be a little bit different. The organizers asked me to stick around to chat. And instead of me usually saying, well, yeah, I got so much to do back at the hotel. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Sit down with them. We chat. We have a beer. We have some pizza. Get to meet some really great people. Hear how they use AWS. Get a better understanding of who they are and what they're up to. And then I realize this is what I really came for. All right, let's get into our launches. The first one is called AWS Bug Bust. This is a global competition or perhaps a meta competition. The idea is you set up a private virtual event for you and for your colleagues. Then you use some of our Code Guru products, the reviewer and the profiler, to find and fix bugs in your code. Within your group, within your team, you can set up leaderboards, challenges, you can offer rewards. Everybody gets to compete in the challenge within your team and the top 10 bug busters across all of our customers, they're gonna win an expense paid trip to reInvent 2021. Our mission, we wanna help you to eliminate 1 million bugs worldwide. To learn more about this, you can read Martin's blog post. Next up, I've got some new CloudWatch metric math functions. Now, rest assured, this isn't about the metric system. It's not about inches or feet or centimeters. It's much cooler than that. You already know that you can create custom visualizations of your health and your performance metrics with CloudWatch. With these new functions, you can aggregate and transform, and you can patch your data. We added 14 new functions. There's things like repeat and linear. They're going to help you to get some better graphs from sparse metrics. There's time series, where you can plot a scalar value over time data point count, so you can count events over time. And there's some time functions, so you can write some customization that triggers within specific time frames or that varies across time frames. Maybe you want to look at different metrics on weekdays versus on weekends. All these cool functions are included in our predefined metric math templates available in all the regions and all the ways, the console, the CLI, the API, SDK, and Cloud Function. To learn more, you can read the what's new, you can check it out, and let me know what you use it for. Finally, a really cool thing called the Tag Tamer. I know I've been telling you about using tags for several years, and now most AWS services, most AWS resources support tags. You can use them for things like access control and billing and all kinds of other tracking. Tag Tamer is this really cool new solution that I think you're gonna really like. What it is, it's a web UI, it helps you to discover, modify, update, and create tags on resources. One thing I love, you can set resource tags based on IAM roles and on user IDs. 
It monitors for when new resources are created. It's kind of magically driven by both CloudTrail and EventBridge. It helps you to apply required tags when these new resources are created. And it also works with Service Catalog. If you create new stuff from the Service Catalog, those are going to get the, create, the tags that you specify. Works across both multiple accounts and services. You can get reports, all kinds of helpful features. You can read the what's new to learn a whole lot more about this solution. And that's all I've got for you this week. I sure hope you enjoyed my story and the three AWS launches. As I always mention, I love your comments, so please keep them coming. I read them all, respond where possible. You can click through to like and subscribe and to leave one of those comments. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.